Man, let me tell you something, folks. I don't think I've seen a season opener for the Oval as good as the one from last night. Season 5, Episode 1, Turning Tables. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with how much I actually enjoyed the episode. I am completely serious here. This was a fantastic episode. I only have potentially one gripe with it. And I don't know how to feel about it. Maybe it will be explained. Maybe it won't. But I, I'll get to the one gripe in just a moment. In terms of scoring, I will give this episode a solid 8 out of 10. I was debating giving it a 9. But I'm like, I don't want to go super high with the score. This is only the season opener. Because, you know, I don't. I hope the quality doesn't dip within the next week or two. But let me just say this season did a very good job setting up, you know, um, what to expect in season five. So first off, it's good to be back in terms of recording content for our kind of entertainment. Just got remonetized last week. So it's going to be maybe a week or so until the channel is fully back in terms of the YouTube algorithm. You know, when I um, post content and it gets a lot of engagement you know since we just got remonetized it may it may take a little bit of time before youtube starts promoting the content more um you know putting it out for suggestions for other viewers so just make sure you engage by liking and commenting because that does go a long way so what we're going to do you know the drill by now we're going to go into the episode break it down scene by scene and uh we did a lot of a uh, hopscotching around uh the dc area but I think this episode did a great job with establishing um, what's to come in season five. So we basically pick up where we left off. Victoria orders <laughs> Secret Service to take the second lady to the bunker. You know, aside from, you know, just being sore, sore back, sore neck. There was really no consequence of them falling from the, uh, you know, balcony a banister of the um, upper floor, the White House, the living area. It reminded me of, uh, what was it, when Allen and Grip fell? But that was, a, I feel like that was a much higher distance when they fell over the banister at the apartment complex that Allen uh, stayed at. I think Grip took the brunt of the fall. That's why Allen was able to pick himself up and he and Priscilla left. And that was at the beginning of season four, I believe, or the back half of season four, I forget. But essentially, um, <laughs> Victoria orders security to restrain Simone, and then she like backhands her. And I think um, Agent Kane, I believe is his name, he's trying to like de-escalate the situation. Like, man, you can't do that. She's like, shut up, take her away to the bunker. You can't do that. I'm the second lady. And they take my baby away to be locked up like a caged animal. So... From there, uh, you know, it's funny because Victoria tells the remaining guards, get the hell out of here. And then she's like, oh, my back. She's just sitting on the stairs. Somebody bring me something for my back. So she then makes it to the Oval to tell. It's like, Hunter, you wouldn't believe what just, oh, my God, Hunter's passed out. She calls for the paramedics to come in. Alonzo rushes in as well. And she's like, did you give him this? It, because she finds the vial of uh, drugs on his desk. It's like, did you give him this? Oh, no, no, I don't know where it came from. So as soon as, you know, the doctor comes in, it's like, drugs oh my goodness so we got they got to put him on a stretcher and get him out of there get him out of the oval and as soon as they do alonso <laughs> and then uh victoria's like look you, you you done effed up bad i know you did this and your life is over so from there we go over to donald's house he's just you know slowly going through the house gun ready to fire as soon as he finds something he sees the guy in his bed shot up then he goes downstairs and sees all the security guards um, incapacitated. I, I don't know if they're dead. I just know there's a bunch of bodies on the floor. So from there, he calls Kyle saying, like, Kyle, you need to go over here immediately. So Kyle, you know, leaves the White House. Lily, this is the part of the episode I'm like, okay, make it make sense. Lily comes back. Why did she come back? Because the officer told her hey i'm here to kill your husband but we need to clear your name of any sort of involvement so i'm going to hit you you grab a set of keys get in your car and then go to a police station leave you know report what happened meaning 
Lily should have been gone. What is she doing back here? Because Donald's like, you try to kill me. You try to kill me. He's like, Donald, if I was trying to kill you, how in the hell would I have done this to all these guards? It was that officer who came in and camouflage and whatnot. So Donald's pissed at that, but then he gets a phone call from Victoria saying, you know, that fool, you know, there's a Christ at the White House overdose. You need to get here right now. So he calls Kyle to say, hey, forget coming to my house. Go back to the White House. I'm coming. And then that's pretty much it, which again, doesn't explain why Lily came back. I mean, how would she know that Donald was still alive, given the fact that she had no clue. I mean, that officer had no clue that he shot the wrong person. I, I don't really know. It just feels like a forced way to, hey, 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 I ain't saying, you know, I want, well, no, I've been saying for a while, Lily hasn't really done anything plot essential in quite a while. But it just make this is just like in Sisters when I think it was the season four finale. Remember when Preston went up to Danny at the airport and told her that he was going back to Texas, but then he was back in like the la the next episode. You know, I couldn't get on the flight. It's like why build up this drama? It's, he was coming right back. It's kind of like that, but essentially, um, yeah. Lily's back now for some reason. Okay, so we go over to the police station. You know, Alan's brought in and he's sitting across from Dale. And he, <laughs> man, they just stay in trouble. But Alan asked Dale to do him a favor. Basically, hey, here's where my key's located. I need you to go to my house. And in the kitchen by the fridge, there's a box that I need you to keep safe because it'll, you know, work out for our benefit to keep us all safe. And, um,. He puts two and two together about him being there for drugs because um, he men Dale mentions the pharmacy situation about Kareem running the drug ring. And it's like, wait, what pharmacy? That pharmacy. So they pretty much realize, like, oh, crap, we're in this mess again. But in any case, Dale is free to go. But Sharon, Sharon is still under arrest. So Kareem is still alive. So, folks, nobody died in the finale. And no, even that guard that was in Donald's bed, if I remember correctly, that was the that was episode 21 of season four when Donald allegedly got shot up. And then in the finale, we had no follow up on that at all until now in the season five premiere. So later in the episode, we know Nancy's still alive. We know Kareem's still alive. Victoria and Simone made it. Hunter is... Not looking good, but based on the trailer, we know that he's alive. But by the end of the episode, well, we'll get to that. So, we go back over to the White House. Doctor tells Victoria it's not looking too good. And she starts chewing out Alonzo again, just as Donald and Kyle arrive to the scene. And they basically are filled in about the situation. And from there, you know, um... She wants Eli to step up and be sworn in, but Donald doesn't want that. It's like, hey, even if, you know, uh, Hunter dies, we need to hide his death for as long as possible to maintain power. So putting Eli in a presidential position wouldn't be a good look because it would move all the pieces on the checkerboard. And especially without Donald knowing about their little affair going on behind the scenes, he's like, man, why would you put him in office when he's trying to destroy you? So, um... While they're talking, Kyle is sent to go grill Alonzo for everything in regards to the drugs that he gave Hunter. So Donald already knows about the Simone situation as well, which catches Victoria off guard. But again, this is Donald we're talking about here. He knows everything. And uh, he also informs Victoria about Jason getting away, even though he's injured and whatnot. So, you know, she chews him out about that. Speaking of which, uh, Jason's out in the middle of the woods. His bike starts peering out and then he's... Uh, I forgot his name. It's that one, uh, Manny, Manny, Manny. Manny uh, approaches him with a gun, uh, asking what he's doing there. And Jason makes up a name. Um, I'm Mike, I'm Mike. And I'm being chased by some people. And I need to get out of here quick. But he's like, um, I need to survive. He, and then from there, Manny makes him go into the compound because he's going to introduce him to the highest. So finally, dang, this is happening quicker than I thought. I'm actually happy about this. So from there, um... Kyle goes down to the uh, security room of the White House just to kind of talk with Alonzo for a little bit. 
And he basically tries to ask him about where he got the drugs from. Alonzo keeps denying it, but it does come out that, you know, it was Kareem's pharmacy. And it turns out that <laughs> Kyle knows about Kareem as well. So he basically just tells Alonzo, look, you screwed up big time. And if uh, Hunter dies, that's your ass. He's like, I know the first lady made that clear. And that's really what that scene was about. So from there, Eli's at home. He can't find Simone anywhere. One of the agents, you know, doing security says, oh, well, uh, your wife actually left here to go to the White House some time ago. So him and Victoria get on the phone and she lets him know about the fact that uh, Simone came over there to try to fight us. Like, I whipped her ass. Victoria, stop capping. Like, Simone was whooping that ass. Yeah, Victoria got some hits in, but Simone won. And then you got that cheap shot when you're like, told, told the security to hold her. And then you slapped her. I'm like, yeah, because she couldn't do anything at that moment. But from there, um, he is elated over the fact that, wait, wait, Hunter Overdose, that means, um, uh, yes, you're the president now, you know, once you get sworn in. So from there, he rushes over to the White House. We go over to Sam and Max. This was probably one of my favorite scenes of the episode. I mean, it was a uh, low energy, but it was a scene that was necessary. You got Sam driving. Max is like, hey, man, are you OK? And he basically just uh, tries to figure out, like, you know, with everything going on, because remember the last scene these two were in, that's when they got to the hideaway cabin where Jason was, but you know, it was set on fire and nobody was found. So they're pretty much in a, oh crap, we are screwed because you know, Jason was the key to helping us out. But now that he's gone, what the hell are we going to do? But of course, at this point, Sam is really only fixated on the fact that Bobby and his wife are messing around. But Max tells Sam a bit about himself. He's like, look, you got to give Priscilla some grace here in terms of how she's been acting and the way she's feeling. You got it on with the first lady, you know, and then he tries to compare his own relationship to Sam's. But Sam puts it in, you know, puts it in place like, hey, hey, you, you and your wife divorced. Yeah, I know. I mean, we agreed to give each other time and space, but we eventually didn't, you know, see eye to eye and we just got a divorce. And it's funny because with everything going on in the Will and Jada situation, um, <laughs> the fact that divorce isn't an option, it just sounds like that's what Sam is spewing out of his mouth. Hey, regardless of who I slept with, um, hey, we're not getting a divorce. And it's like, but didn't you say you were getting a divorce after Bobby beat your ass. So where's this coming from, Sam? So he basically lets him, Max basically tells like, look, man, karma's a bitch and what goes around comes around, but maybe you should just give your wife some space and Sam isn't, you know, falling for that. He just wants to get revenge on Bobby and whatnot. So Eli calls Max and basically says he needs a ride to the white house. And, uh, Sam, instead of, um, going directly to Eli's basically goes to the hotel. He says something to the effect of, Hey, um, we need to get your car. He's like, wait, what are you talking about? So basically, I think that Sam, you know, based off the ending, he stays posted up at the hotel while Max is sent to Eli's by himself to, you know, arrange the ride to the White House. So from there, Max is standing at Eli's, you know, and uh, he calls Sam's like, where are you at, Sam? We're getting ready to go to the White House. And then he calls Bobby and warns him, look, look Bobby, you need to stay alert. Sam might be coming for your ass. And neither of them answer the phone. So Eli comes down, asks where Sam is. Uh, he was right behind me, sir. I don't know where he is, but hey, we got your ride ready to go to the White House. So they actually leave and we go over to the hospital real quick. And we're almost done with the episode. This review might not be very long, but don't, don't, you know, be fooled. This is actually pretty dang good. So at the hospital, Nancy, you know, has a neck brace on and she's still delusional. She doesn't remember anything that happened prior to the hospital. Richard is trying to keep her calm. So he doesn't tell her Hey, you tried to hang yourself, but you know, he says he tries, tries to question her about the pills. Like, do you remember the pills you took or anything? And Nancy's like, did you try to hurt me? Did you try to choke me? And then the doctor comes in and she, he's about to reveal what happened, but then Richard stops him. But then Nancy starts screaming, Rich, my husband, he tried to choke me out. And the doctor's like, wait, what? And then Richard's like, whoa, 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 wait now. And then we switch scenes. <laughs> then at the final scene priscilla comes over to the hotel room bobby baby opens the door and then they sit on the couch and you know he basically explains how he got the you know hotel room because of eli and whatnot and bobby's ready to get it on but priscilla and i ain't gonna lie bobby called her out correctly on this because she's been all talk just all talk i mean what since season two talking that ass off that's why 
I give Simone more props than Priscilla because Priscilla's just been talking shit for three seasons now and hasn't, as far as I remember, never put a hand on Victoria. Yeah, she snuck in her room late at night. whoop de doo But Simone, she had them hands. Her first, like her first, like real, uh, real encounter, because I believe it, uh, if I remember correctly, she suspected that Victoria was throwing herself at Eli as opposed to them having a full blown affair. So her getting the inkling that you're trying to get with my husband, she stepped to Victoria. Priscilla, on the other hand, her husband got it on with Victoria and she never put her hand on her, you know? So Simone, yeah, Simone takes that number one spot in my book. But regardless, Priscilla's talking all this stuff about, oh yeah, you know, Bobby is better than you, Sam, this, that, and the third. But as soon as you and him are alone, all that talking stops. You're all prim and proper, a little bit nervous and whatnot. And Bobby tries to get her to relax. So he gets her to turn around and, you know, starts massaging her shoulders and then, uh, goes to her lower back, starts kissing her neck and everything. And you could tell she's kind of into it, but then there's a feeling of guilt and being uncomfortable. It's like, I I'm sorry, Bobby, I made a mistake. I, I, I can't do this. Like, fine, fine. So he walks to the door. He opens the door. Sam is there. Three shots fired. Bobby goes down. Priscilla is freaked out. Now go home and wash my clothes, bitch. And I'm like, damn. Bobby died for nothing. Can you believe that? Can you believe Bobby died? Look, I'm going to say this. I've already seen, and I've done videos on the episode synopsis for two, three, and four of season five. Bobby's name is not mentioned. I think Bobby is dead. And what a way to go out. To get killed like that, at, and you ain't even get none. All that time chasing after Lily, Lily rejects you because her whole family's life is on the line and she leaves, you know, Donald's house. <laughs> you try to hook up with Priscilla and the moment you two are finally alone, she can't because she even comes in and says, uh, Bobby's like, wow, you look great. Ooh, well, you should wait until you see me naked and I, without any clothes on. He didn't see shit. Well, like Max said, karma's a bitch. Oh, well. So with that being said, that's the episode in a nutshell. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.